Hi, this is Ahana. In this video, we are going to understand model validation in ASP.NET Core Web API. As part of this series, we are working on this Web API, which is a to-do list Web API. In our previous session, we have discussed about model binding. In ASP.NET Core, model binding is the process of mapping data from incoming HTTP requests to action method parameters. Look at this action method, create to-do item. This method takes parameter of type to-do item DTU. As ASP.NET Code Framework supports this model binding feature, without writing even a single line of code, we get the values mapped to this model. From request, automatically values mapped to this new item DTU. Likewise, ASP.NET Core Framework supports one more fantastic feature called model validation. Model validation is the process of validating incoming data before further processing. Look at our code. In this case, we are in this case we are only checking if model, if whatever the data that is received is null. If it is null, then we are returning bad request. Apart from this, we are not doing any kind of validation. With model validation, we have an option to validate the data before further processing. Next, let's understand how to implement model validation. We can follow three simple steps to implement model validation. First step is to specify validation rules. Second step is to validate the model. And lastly, we handle the validation errors. We specify validation rules using data annotation attributes. This is our to-do item model. And here we have to-do item DTU. If you look at this to-do controller, here this create to-do item receives model of type to-do item DTU. Now we are going to specify rules on this DTU. This DTU has three fields. One is ID, title and is complete. Based on our requirement, we can specify different data annotation attributes. Now here we have title. I want to make this title a mandatory field. We can use required attribute. See, we can use required attribute. If you look at this attribute, see this is from system.componentmodel.dataannotations namespace. Now, I will use this one. And I'll add this namespace. So, this will make this title field mandatory. And not only single attribute, we can use multiple attributes on this attribute. I want to specify length on this attribute. To specify the length, we can use string length attribute. We have to specify number of characters. I will specify it as 100. Along with these attributes, we can specify error messages as well. With the string length attribute, let's specify the error message. This is going to be the error message if this validation fails. And if we don't supply value for title, then we are going to get this error message. For now, I'll not specify anything for this is complete attribute. Using these data annotation attributes, we have specified our validation rules. Our first step is done. Next step is to validate the model. When a request is received, ASP.NET Core Framework automatically performs model binding. It will bind incoming request data to this model and it will perform model validation based on the rules that we have specified using data annotation attributes. Next, we are going to handle these validation errors. Now, we are going to modify our controller action method. See, in this create to do item, we are checking for this null. We are going to keep this check as it is. After this, we are going to add one more check. Okay, we are going to use model state. Model state, see, this model state, see, this contains the state of the model and model binding validation. So, we are going to use this model state. Model state, this has is valid property. We are going to check model state is valid. This returns true or false. If all the values, if all the checks are satisfied, 
it will have a value true if anything goes wrong and if if any of the rules are not satisfied then it will have a value false what we are going to do if model state is not valid then we are going to return bad request and what we are going to do if model state is not valid we are not just going to return this bad request we are going to pass model state as well using three simple steps we have implemented model validation now it's time to verify our changes i'll run this application this will open swagger ui now we are going to first let's verify get all to do items see we have these two to do items now we are going to post one more item let's first test it for a positive scenario i will say I will add my to do item and I will make it false and I will execute this. So, this is our response body. Once again, I will execute this get all method. See, we have successfully adding this new to do item to the list. Now, once again, I am going to try it out. I will not pass anything. And I will execute this. See, now we have this error status is 400, and we have this. See, we have this error non empty request body is required. This time, I'm not going to pass this title, I'll remove this title and I will execute this. See. This time look at the error message, error response status code is 400 and status is 400 and it says title is one or more validation errors occurred and the error is title is required. Because we have passed model state along with two bad requests, we are, we are able to display proper error message to the client. See, this is how we can easily implement model validation in our ASP.NET Core Web API. We can implement custom validation as well, but we are not going to cover that in this video. Let's understand that in some other video. In our application, we are using simple two attributes required and string length. But based on your requirement, there are various n number of attributes. You can explore them and you can use them in your application. Just a conclusion, we can use three simple steps to implement model validation. That's it for today's session. There is a lot more to learn. See you soon in the next video. Thank you.